Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Alain Sylvain. I'm the founder and CEO of Sylvain Labs. We're a strategy and design consultancy here in New York, but we have offices elsewhere too. We help companies think about their future, their products and brands. I'm here to talk about the exploitation of purpose, about how companies have misappropriated this term in some cases, and perhaps used it for, for ill. I want to start with a story. I want to talk about Dr. John Rock. Dr. John Rock uh, was a famous OBGYN and researcher, born and raised outside of Boston, Massachusetts. And he saw, as an Irish Catholic, the, the dangers and risks of two big families, of families that were too large. And he took it as his own life mission to help women discover and implement birth control, to give them power of their body and use the natural reproductive system to, to do birth control. And here's the thing. Dr. Rock was a devout Catholic. He devoted his life to Catholicism. And so it was really interesting. He, it was in conflict. Here he was advocating for birth control, but at the same time was a staunch Catholic. And he famously said, always stick to your own conscience. Let no one ever keep it for you. That was his attitude about the Catholic Church. His own purpose to help women control their bodies and in, uh, achieve a sense of birth control was greater than his belief in the Catholic Church. His purpose was paramount. And I like to think about that story because it helps ground what purpose is and what that term really can be. Because we're at a time now where purpose has been sort of used over and over and over again. There, this is not the only conference called Purpose. Purpose is thrown around, and we've become sort of numb to its meaning almost. And it's important to step back and think, what does purpose really, really mean? And if you look it up in a dictionary, it's really about the, the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. And But yet we use purpose in so many contexts. CSR, personal purpose, um, organizational vision, the term is used a lot of different ways, and I question, do we all, are we all really speaking the same language? But here's the thing, purpose, the idea of purpose is part of the human condition. Everything we do, every decision we make, everything we buy, every product that's made, every single thing is derived by some sort of purpose. It's like a drop of ink in a glass of water. Purpose is everywhere. Purpose is everywhere in how we think, and there's a reason for that. We have a primal connection to purpose. Purpose connects us to community. It actually creates the sense of mutual interdependence. We align ourselves with like-minded people. You know, Beyonce in the Bayhive, you might argue her product is not actually music. It's the ability to align us and mobilize like-minded people. That's what Beyonce is doing. Purpose gives us a reason to live. There's all this great research that shows that people can almost cure their own physicality, their own body, through having a sense of hope and a sense of purpose. Purpose informs our own self-identity. You know, there's the parable of the, the three bricklayers. The first one says, I'm just a bricklayer. The second one says, I'm building a church. And the third bricklayer says, I'm building a house of God. It's through purpose that we often define ourselves and our role in society. And it's very interesting that corporations are increasingly channeling our own purpose to help promote themselves. And many of us as consumers, we're looking to companies to help express our own sense of purpose, our own purpose, our own beliefs, our own values. And it's become intertwined with profit. And we're beginning to see purpose used in marketing as a way to drive sales. And Colin Kaepernick's, uh, the, the endorsement of Colin Kaepernick by Nike is a great example of this. It really was a polarizing moment where Nike made a claim and stated its purpose to support this athlete and support these marginalized voices in support of police brutality, of uh, uh, you know, criticizing police brutality. And that triggered sales. And that's why this discourse around profit, or I should say purpose over profit, is around. We hear it all the time. It's a maxim heard over and over again, purpose over profit. We hear it all the time. And it's, be and it's really become sort of um, uh, really on vogue within the past couple of years, certainly with the business roundtable and other things that have been discussed. But, but Larry Fink, uh, his letter to CEOs uh, for the past two years is really a great uh, step forward in this conversation because he argues that purpose is actually key to fundamental business practice. It's not really just all about touchy-feely, have a purpose and care for your neighbor. It's actually tied to revenue. Companies are stepping up, and companies increasingly are looked to 
perhaps in this po polarized political environment, to have a voice, whether you're talking about CEOs lining up for gun control or CEOs lining up for immigration reform or CEOs lining up for climate change. I, argue, I believe that 2020 will see many more of these CEO letters and you know, you, we'll see many of these headlines over and over again. Brands have been created to manifest these purposes and now companies, through their brands, are trying to save the world which is kind of crazy. You know, 50 years, we would never talk about companies really having the right and the power and the privilege and the hubris, perhaps, to save the world. Brands are now, believe it's within their remit to save the world. Tesla is not a car company. Tesla is a visionary, innovative company that espouses all the great values of innovation. Or, or you know, Beyond Meats and Impossible Foods. They're not just a food company. It's kind of a, you know, a food science company with a really environmental sensibility. Um, so it's not just about food, or, or Fenty Beauty is not just a makeups or cosmetics brand, it's really a platform for diversity and inclusion. Brands right now, their core products, their, what they're making on the manufacturing line is actually not plastic or certain goods, it's actually a belief system or a purpose itself. But here's the thing, there's a dark side to purpose. We're beginning to see this term and this idea being exploited by brands. Um, you know, whether you're talking about pink washing, you know, State Street and their statue, the fearless girl down in Wall Street got a lot of attention, but a lot of people don't know that, that State Street um, had to pay a $5 million gender pay discrimination suit um, not, not too long ago, or that their board is, is, over, is perhaps overly male. You know, rainbow washing, you go to pride parades, you'll see a lot of consumer banks sponsoring these parades, but what you might not know is that 73% of, uh, same, uh, of same sex uh, couples are, are more likely to not be ex uh, uh, accepted for a loan or a mortgage. Greenwashing, you know, Fiji water, you know, uh, about 2008, made a promise to be carbon negative. Um, and they, they set some audacious goals and had to dial them back and really mute that pledge. It's a lot. These companies are really making these really audacious claims and, and latching onto these uh, social movements. How about woke washing? How about these companies that are now, you know, claiming to have some sort of virtuous integrity for what they stand for, this Gillette and this whole idea of the, the best a man can be? What right does Gillette have to join the gender conversation in 2019? I argue all of this is a sort of hollow advocacy, that these are, these are exploited, exploiting tactics of companies to try to tap into our wallets and tap into our hearts. And so I think it's really quite simple. Stop pimping. Purpose. I think it's much more, much more than that. Which takes me back to John Rock. Uh, always stick to your own conscience. Let no one ever keep it for you. Brands should not keep our conscience. We should not be looking for brands to help express our own identity. Because purpose is easy. Commitment is hard. The commitment is key. The companies that commit to change over decades, over generations, that to me is impressive. That perhaps is a manifestation of their purpose in a new way. You know, John Rock, he committed decades of his life through this fight, so much so that he was estranged by the Catholic Church in the last 20 years of his life, back from the 30s all the way into, his, into the late 70s. A lot of us talk about Patagonia in this context, of course, and we all roll our eyes with purpose of Patagonia. Are you ready for another Patagonia example? But there's a reason for that. Founded in 1973, every day, Patagonia commits to their cause to save the planet through business every single day. They've been, it's very en vogue today, but since 1973, they've donated profits, they've contributed to environmental causes, they've 100% organic cottons, day after day after day, and that's commitment. That's not a promise, that's a commitment. Or Ben and Jerry and their commitment to linear prosperity and making sure everyone along that cycle from employees to supply chain, everybody in some way benefits from the power of what they're doing. So again, it takes me back to John Rock. Um, if this humble physician in Boston could commit to something greater than any organization, as powerful as the Catholic Church, what does that say about us and the companies we represent? What would a company filled with John Rocks look like, where we're all committed to a united and common purpose? That, to me, is truly, truly the power of purpose. My name is Alain Sylvain, founder and CEO of Sylvain Labs. Thank you for your time. <laughs>